Welcome to this video that talks about date and time calculations within Microsoft Access Queries. Now, before we jump into the queries, we need to practice and learn a few things. First, how do dates and times work in Access? Well, Access does not store dates as we record them. That is, it's not January 4th, 2017 or, or something like that. Rather, they're stored as double precision floating point numbers up to 15 decimal places. Now, what does that mean? Well, the integer part of the number, 312, for example, represents the date, and everything in the decimal portion represents the time. Now, to show you two examples of this, here's the valid date range for dates in access. It goes from negative 657,434, which equates to January 1st, 100 AD, to 2,958,465, which is December 31st, 9... 1999 AD. All right, a date value of zero represents December 30th, 1899. Anything before December 30th, 1899 is a negative number. Anything after is a positive. Now, one more point to make: the time ranges from 0 0.0 to 0.99999. That is, those numbers can go in military time from zero to almost 24 o'clock. So the numeric values are a fraction of a day if you convert them to hours, minutes, seconds by multiplying by 24. Now why, why does Access store data in this way? Well the reason is it allows you to add and subtract and figure out differences much more easily than if you store it as January 13th. So the whole point is you will see dates formatted as you're used to. Something like this January 1st um, 100 AD but what's actually being done in the background is this number here. So that just gives you a little bit of overview of how they work. Now, there's a lot to do with dates. Uh, he, we provide, I provide a reference to this, examples of using dates as criterion access queries link, so you can go look at that. And you're not expected to memorize all of these, but for example, if, if you know you need to do something with dates, you can come in here and see. Here are examples that use current dates in the criteria, or that work with date ranges. So if we click on here, if we want to match a date, you'll notice that we put it in with the hashtag 2-2-2012 hashtag. Now the hashtags are important because it tells Access, hey, we're not doing division, or this isn't text, but this is supposed to be a date. So then Access can convert this into the number that represents February 2nd, 2012. That way you don't have to do any additional work, but let Access do all the work by converting them into those numbers that we previously spoke about. All right, so let's get into an example. First one, for all orders that have payments submitted, calculate and display two values, the time to ship, labeled time to ship, and the time to collect, the payment, or the time to collect the payment after the customer has been billed, labeled time to collect. Time to sh ship should be calculated as the ship date less the order date, time to collect should be calculated as the cash receipt date less the ship date, and display these fields in this order, order number, order date, ship date, time to ship, and time to collect. Let's pull open Access. Now what I'd like to start usually doing is looking at relationships and seeing which tables I'm going to need. So in, in this case, I know that I'm going to have to calculate time to ship, which is the ship date less the order date. Well, ship date is in this table ship, and the order date is in this orders table. And I'm also going to need time to collect, which is the cash receipt date uh, to the ship date right there. So I know I'm going to need the orders table, the ship table, and the cash receipt. I'm going to go ahead and create a query in design mode. I'm going to take the orders table, the ship table, make that a little bigger, and then the cash receipts table. All right. If we go back to the query, it says display in the final query these fields in this order. And I like to drop these in. Order number, order date, ship date, time to ship, and time to collect. Okay, so I need order number. I need the order date, I need the ship date, and then I need um, those two calculated fields, time to ship and time to collect. All right, so how am I going to do this? Well, rather than type the field in here, I'm going to go up to Builder, click on Builder, and the first thing I'm going to do is calculate time to ship. So I use my alias. And that was calculated as the ship date less the order date. Now to make sure I don't 
type something in wrong, I'm actually going to go into my tables here. And I need first the ship date. So that's in the ship table. And if I do this, it will just put it in here. Now remember, it adds this expression, but I've already added the alias. So I correctly add that ship date minus my uh, order date. So I got to come into my orders table, put in orders, and I'm good to go. So that fills it in. Let's check. Time to ship is four. And it looks like from September 1st to September 5th is four days. This one shipped on the first day. So it looks like I got that one correct. All right, the next one I need to do is time to collect. Again, I'm going to go into Builder. Oh, I got to move over one. I'm going to go time to collect. I'm going to open up my tables. And this one's going to be the cash receipt date. Delete that expression minus the ship date. So come down here, pop that in. <coughs> I've got order number, order date, ship date, time to ship, time to collect. And there we have it. We've answered that query. So again, just make sure you get the right tables in. You'll notice that when I did go in and do calculation, even though these, these are dates, that I can just subtract them because it stores them as numbers and calculates that in terms of days. All right, let's go to the next query. All right, this next query says, create a query that shows the seasonality of when products are ordered. That is, show each inventory item on a row and each month on the columns and then list the total number of inventory items shipped each month. Display in the final query these fields in this order. Inventory name and month listed as a number. All right, at first you might want to jump in and, and do a query like we have. However, this is throwing just a curveball at you. And that's to remind you that all of these skills that we're learning for querying can be mashed together and, and used in different ways. So this is actually not just a regular select query, but a cross-tab query. Notice that it wants inventory items on row and months on the columns. So as, as you go through learning this stuff, remember, after we finish learning each of these skills, we're going to combine them together. So let's do that here. Go ahead and open up Access. I'm going to create a new query. Now you'll remember I need to go and change this to a cross-tab query. All right, and it says in display in the final query, I want the inventory name. So I'm going to need my inventory table. And then I also want to know when things are ordered. So to do that, I need to also bring in my orders table. Okay, You'll notice these two tables aren't connected. And I don't have a way to connect them. I need to make sure I add in my orders detail table so that, that they're connected. So the first thing I know, I need my inventory name. And I want that as my row heading so that all my inventory items will appear. And then I need to put on the columns the month. Now if I put order date down here, What's going to happen is it's going to put every single order date. So I need months. So I'm going to come back to that in a second and, and show you that. Uh, but then the final thing I need is total number of inventory items shipped. And so we've got the quantity ordered. We'll put that. And that's going to be the value. And it's also going to need to be totaled. So I'm going to sum those up. So now notice if I run this, uh, I got a problem here. There's 401 column headers. So this order date, there's 401 different dates in there. That's not what I want. So how can I change this? Well, I am going to first list this as month, put that alias. And then I'm going to use the formula month. Make this a little bigger. And what that formula does is extract the month from this number, from the order date. If I use year, it would extract the year, day, the day. So now when I run it, you'll notice that I get month 1, January, month 2, 3, 4, etc., all the way to month 12. Move this over a little bit. We can see a little bit more. And then here's the items. So if we look, the these different items are sold in different quantities throughout the year. It looks like January, February, March, we sell the mo most of this Cougar. And then a little bit less. Oh, also December is a pretty big month. Now you could export this and create a nice, beautiful visualization with it. But for our purposes, we're learning how to do this. Um, we use the month formula to extract the month from this order date. All right, so those are just a few things we can do with dates and times. Remember, they're stored as numbers so that we can add, subtract, we can do criteria. Uh, 
do realize if we wanted a criteria here, just as an example, that you need to use that number sign, the hashtag. So we might say we only want uh, from month, or if we're using a date, we'd have to do something like that. Now this wouldn't work because I've got month in here, but remember dates are surrounded by hashtags. All right, good luck with your homework.